Hello everyone, it is Wednesday, December 13, and this is another episode of Flossmas. Thanks so much for joining me. Uh, I don't know about you, but it's been a busy week already and it's only Wednesday morning. There were meetings and events and get-togethers and whatnot. Uh, I do have a holiday party tonight, so the cookies that I made the other day are starting to wing their way out of the house. I did take a delivery over to my parents last night. I have another holiday party on Friday, which they'll also be given out. So. Um, I enjoyed making them as I talked about, but it's also good to start seeing the many, many cookies leave the house. Um, I did of course put them in the freezer after I was done so that they'll still, they'll still be fresh later in the week, but um, I am enjoying seeing everybody enjoy those. And I did get from a couple of comments, several people who said, those sound really good, I should make those. So if you do and you enjoy them, if you don't enjoy them, just let me know because I think it's always fun to share recipes and talk about those things together. So. Um, have fun with that. And I did want to say I, I wanted to apologize and thank you for your patience. I'm a couple of days behind on responding to comments on my last couple of videos and I will get to that pretty soon, but thank you for being patient with me as I haven't gotten a chance to take care of that yet, but hopefully pretty soon. Um, so with that, I think we'll head into the, the conversation for the day. Um, the first thing I want to show you is, of course, my fully finished object, something that is hanging on my Christmas tree. And this is a very simple piece that I finished last year. Uh, and this is by UB Design, who is a German designer. And this is a piece called Weinacht. And it just says in the little strings, you can see it says Weinacht, uh, and then it's a little candle. And for this one, I used the same um, Vicky Clayton silks, not necessarily the same colors, but the Vicky Clayton silks that I am using for my Advent piece this year to stitch this one. Uh, and then I finished it very simply. This is just a little mini frame that I picked up at Michael's last year. It was all pre-done, pre and then all I did was just glue a little hanger on the back uh, and stuck that piece pretty much right inside. It was a little chalkboard message. Um, I think I had to change the hanger because the orientation was the other way, but a very easy finish. Uh, and I believe that this was actually possibly the first ornament that I actually got on my tree last year. I pretty much finished it, fully finished it, and immediately walked downstairs and, and hung it on the tree. So it always reminds me of that when I get to see that one. So that is Vinoct by UB Design. And then since we're talking about UB Design, I thought I would also show you a couple of pieces by them, or it's actually by her, that I um, have not stitched yet, but are in my collection to be stitched. This is one that I've had for a couple of years now and I haven't stitched it yet only because it's just a little bit of a bigger piece and I have been wanting to focus on some of the smaller pieces before I do this but this is one that is very much something that I would like to have done in the future and it's just this wonderful string of kind of Christmas related objects that are hanging um, and the way that I have seen it finished is maybe hung over kind of a faux window motif something like that so very much something that I would like to do in the future. Um, and this one is Weinach Zeit. Um, so Christmas night, I think that that is. I don't know. Now that I say that, I don't know. If you speak German and I just mess that up, sorry. Um, but I really like that it's just all of those little objects hanging. Uh, and so you feel, I think, like you get a little bit of a mini finish each time you stitch one of those. So um, I'm having really good success stitching their pieces with the Vicky Clayton silks, so this may be another one that I do with that as well. And then the, I also couldn't choose between a couple of their patterns to show you, so this is also one that I, is a very recent purchase for me, and it is those toadstools, which we've talked about in the past, are kind of a lucky, a symbol of luck in Germany, and so I thought that was just really cute. And I love these with with the presents, uh, the Christmas tree with the toadstools, these kind of classic um, lantern scene. So I actually am not quite sure which of those I would pick. Maybe I can do some sort of uh, duology or triptych uh, for those, but I really like that one. Um, and I'm happy to have that as part of my collection as well. So this is, um, I'm going to assume that this says toadstools in snow. I know that this is in snow, so. Um, that is, I will put all the information down below, of course. So those are the couple of pieces um, by UB Design that I have stitched and would like to stitch in the future. Um, if you're looking to purchase their patterns, I have purchased some of them from um, Casa Sandina, which is an Italian cross-stitch shop. 
uh, and you can get them from there. You can get them from the French Needle sometimes, which is an online store. Um, and I also know that the Silver Needle in Tulsa, Oklahoma has started carrying some of her uh, patterns as well. Typically more the book books than the individual patterns, but those are a couple of sources for her patterns that I know that you can um, find. So with that, the next thing is to show you my advent calendar um, that I am stitching on. I'm continuing to be very proud of myself that I'm faithfully keeping up with it every day. Um, and so today we have for the 13th, we have a tiny little reindeer. Um, I thought that one was just such a sweet little piece. I, I wasn't quite sure looking at the pattern how it would turn out. There are a lot of over one and partial stitches for that piece, but I think it's really cute. Um, I love how even within these very small uh, areas that were the, the designer is able to kind of really make clear what they are. Uh, and so that one was our reindeer for the day. Um, and I've talked in the past that I always feel like I forget the number. My new technique is to, I will do the outline, then I'll do the number, and then I'll do the actual uh, central motif. And maybe that will help me actually remember. So that was what I did yesterday. It worked once. Uh, the next thing to show you, and I, sorry, we're starting to get the sun shining in this morning, so I will keep going. Um, the next thing is, of course, opening up our advent calendars together. This is day 13 from Tom and Lily Creations thread calendar. Ooh, let's see here. Another little secret message. Aha, subscription code to joining her, um, that thread or fabric subscriptions, which uh, she offers both of those. So I have been part of the thread subscription for a while and again, really enjoyed it. So well worth the effort. Uh, and this is just a gorgeous orange, like a, you could absolutely say this is like a Halloween orange. This is another one that just kind of has a generic name to it, but also one that you could use as accents in candles, for example, and other Christmas motifs. So gorgeous color, wonderful. And then we also have our historical sampler company um, piece for the 13th. I tried not to look at them before I actually show them to you. Um, oh, cute. Uh, we've got some stickers and they're kind of those paper feel stickers. These are by Rico Design. I'm really loving getting some of the Rico pieces. I have a couple of their um, patterns, but I hadn't bought some of their other kind of supplies. And there's just some really lovely uh, kind of gold metallic winter stickers. I will absolutely be using these. I, I'd use a, a planner to kind of track um, my cross stitching and a few other things. And so this will be a wonderful, maybe a January spread set to use. So some stickers for the day. And then the last thing that I want to show you this morning is um, just another kind of little thing that makes me happy during the Christmas season, and that is my Christmas mug collection. Um, if you're a regular Floss Tube viewer of mine, you know that I often show you my Christmas, or you, I often show you my mugs. I often have a, a cup of coffee with me while I'm talking, um, but I do have a couple of Christmas specific mugs in my collection. I don't limit myself to only using them at Christmas, but this time of year, they've definitely been brought to the front of the, the cabinet so I can use them more often. So I have a few that um, have no real personal connection. They have no real sentiment to them other than simply I saw them and I liked them. So I have a couple of those as well as some that have some kind of specific meaning to me as well. So just a little quick tour of my mug collection. This is one that I bought. This, is, I think, is actually the first one that I bought of my, my Christmas collection. Uh, and I just thought it was a really lovely, it's a winter scene. It's um, what looks like a couple kind of driving in a sleigh in front of a cabin and some Christmas trees and then just kind of some pine cones at the top. And it's got this lovely little filigree uh, as well as in the handle. Um, so again, nothing, um, I didn't pick it up anywhere special. I just like it. Uh, and I enjoy that those, it has that kind of classic feel to it. So that is our first mug. The next one is also one that I just picked up because I liked it. It's massive. I mean, you can fit a lot of coffee in this one, which is, which is a very important thing. Um, but this one just says joy to the world and it has some kind of holly and leaves there. Uh, and it's kind of a speckled um, ceramic with a red interior and I I love this one because I really love the bright colors 
it's just a very cheerful mug to me, um, but also it is an excessively large um, capacity and you can't complain about that. So that is our second mug. Uh, the next one is one that is, again, just kind of something I picked up. This is um, Spode Mug, who is a ceramic or, um, am I coming up with the right word? Ceramic? Um, mug this, um, company out of England and they have these kind of classic um, this classic image and you can find it on many different pieces and you can collect the Spode collection and you can buy them and they all have kind of the same look and every year I see them and I think oh I don't really need that I don't need that and this year I just saw it and I thought you know what I just need a little mug it's just a little tiny mug um, and then it also has I think that's some mistletoe in the in the center um, and so it's just a little one with a Christmas tree and traditional presents and then kind of a, a Saint Nic Nicholas on the top. Um, so, you know, in contrast with this one, it's just depending on how much caffeine intake or tea you need in your life. But this is a, a classic Spode style. The next one is an early purchase. And this is one that I bought when I was in Colonial Williamsburg a number of years ago. I needed to go up to Williamsburg for a work event um, and visited, of course, Colonial Williamsburg and the shop while I was there. Uh, and I bought this one and it is a, a piece that they had commissioned that shows some of their houses at Christmas time in the snow. And so I bought that one. It's one I've been using for many years. The artist is Karen Cruden. Um, and I really enjoy that one, just a normal size mug. Um, but that one is Colonial Williamsburg at, in, at Christmas. Uh, the next one is one that you've seen before if you've watched some past videos. This is a mug that I picked up at a German Christmas market a number of years ago. Uh, and one of the things about German Christmas markets is something called Glühwein and Kinderpunsch. And that is a mulled wine, a warm mulled wine, or a non-alcoholic version for kids. Uh, and it's very traditional that each town has its own recipe and they have commemorative mugs and it's a different one every year. Uh, and so when you get your Glühwein or your Kinderpunsch, you also get to keep the mug. And if you return it, you get a little bit of your money back, but if not, you get to keep this uh, souvenir. And so this is uh, from the Mines um, Christmas market and one that I use each time. You know, they're pretty small. I mean, you, you, you can get a lot of Glühwein, uh, but um, really something that I enjoy. And it has, they, they do have kind of a the Christmas lights that are in the center and then this is the dome that's of the cathedral in the background. So that is one of my most treasured kind of pieces. And then the last one is actually got some of my coffee in it for this morning. Uh, and this is Fezziwig's Christmas Party. So another Christmas Carol reference. Um, this is one that I bought several years ago. There was a new production of The Christmas Carol that was on Broadway in 2019 and Campbell Scott was playing Scrooge and it was a very creative set. I mean, there were like lock boxes and they, all of the set kind of came out from the stage itself. Um, very creative, wonderful, like the, the set design and the lighting were just absolutely wonderful. Campbell Scott was fantastic. Um, and I saw that kind of fall, late fall, 2019 and um, I saw it in previews, which is when they're still kind of working through it. It hasn't officially opened. They're still working through their performances and getting things right. And there were some problems during the performance, but I think that that's, that's what's fun about going to a preview is you get to see that. You get to see the actors have to improv and have to deal with the issue live on stage. So, it, you know, you're not getting that slick performance, but you're getting a little bit of a look behind the scenes. So I always enjoy going to see things in preview. Um, but I bought this mug. It was one of the things, that, you know, pieces of merchandise that they were selling. And I just thought a, a commemorative mug of the Fezziwig family Christmas party was just really clever and a fun piece of merchandising that also makes sense in the context of the story. So I bought this mug, I used it for a while, and then when I was moving, it broke. And I was really sad because I had loved that mug. And um, very recently, I just had this moment, I was like, you could probably get one on eBay. I, I came very late to eBay in life. Uh, and so I forget that it's something that I can go and look at. And so I had this thought, like, I bet I could go find something. I could get one on eBay. And so I looked and yes, there were several readily available. And so it arrived just the other day. Um, 
So I am happy to have that back in my life. I mean, like, yes, there's this little thing in my head that says it's not the mug that you bought there, but like, pff, who cares? Um, I, it's still something that I have that good memory of and it's something I can use. And it's a good one for capacity. So with that, thank you for joining me again for the day. I will look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. And cheers. Happy holidays, everybody.